welcome to this edition of Environment. We're here at Tennis Sol, a company that wants to profit from the gold in the sky and so has been making solar panels for the last number of years. As the economic crisis hits hard, there's been less investment in renewable energy. The International Energy Agency predicts a fall of about 38% in 2009. In this show, we'll be taking a closer look at the value of the sun. You'll see that clouds are accumulating over solar panels in Spain. And before we leave you, we'll bring you to Egypt, where you'll see that tourists there are getting their hands dirty in the white desert. This cell costs 7 euros, and you need 60 of them to make just one solar panel. Indeed, capturing the sun's energy has its price. It became an attractive investment, mostly thanks to grants from governments. But in these times of financial gloom, solar subsidies are evaporating fast. Spain is perhaps suffering worse from this current drought. Its market is falling to pieces. Jose Baquero is an entrepreneur in the solar energy business. He's installed solar panels for the past 15 years. He's one of the pioneers of solar energy in Spain. Business was going very well. Growth in the sector was exponential until last September. Then recession arrived and the government also hit the sector by imposing drastic limits on the new photovoltaic installations. First of all, the government lowered the subsidies it gave to sell on energy produced from renewable sources. I understand that because there are a lot of companies who came into this market to speculate. But the problem is that the law limits our business and sets very restrictive administrative rules on us. The systems installed in 2008 alone produced 2,500 megawatts. In 2009, the government set the limit at no more than 250 megawatts, a tenth. Regulation arrived virtually overnight. In terms of jobs, the result is the following. Last year, the industry employed 45,000 people. And this year, we've got about 15,000 jobs. Greenpeace is against the production limits imposed by the government. They think state regulation of the photovoltaic sector is not going to stimulate other clean energies. On the contrary. The problem is that the government has not only set limits on solar energy, but at the moment it is in the process of legislating to limit production of other renewable energies. The authorities are giving in to pressure from large electricity companies, which have every interest in protecting their nuclear plants. Gone is the era of vast fields of solar panels. For the business people we met, the future will be about small installations on buildings, for instance. The new target, the French market. We can incorporate solar panels very easily into a garage, hide them in the building's design. I think that's the solution, the argument against the main downside of solar panels, the issue of how they look in the landscape. Jose Baquero is turning to homeowners. These batteries make his office energy self-sufficient. They can do the same for homes in isolated areas. Clearly, that's a market of people who need electricity and for whom it ends up being more expensive for them to get onto the electricity network rather than set up a self-sufficient system. 80% of the energy which Spain needs is currently imported. Ecologists and solar companies are hoping that energy dependency will encourage the authorities to have a change of heart. Here they're starting to lay down the electronic circuit of the solar panel. From start to finish, it takes 45 minutes to make one solar panel. During that time, enough sunlight falls on Earth to potentially provide humanity with a year's worth of energy. So why hasn't the sun taken over our energetic world? The sun, a great natural resource. The sun can provide electricity to the entire planet. But for that, technology needs to be up to speed. Scientists are working on new solar panels that will be more powerful, easier to use and cheaper. Location is important. Panels work best in areas where the sun is at its hottest, in deserts, for example. At the moment, the Emirate of Ras Al Khaimah is building the world's first solar island to generate huge amounts of electricity. Storing and transporting energy is also tricky especially when it has to travel thousands of kilometers from the producer to the client. As you go along the production chain, you start losing the energy. We've seen many losses along the way, and our job is to reduce these losses and make sure the energy is restored entirely, and this, of course, to the various connecting points. Cost is another issue. To compete with oil or nuclear energy, 
Solar panels need to be more profitable to attract clients. Companies have made a real effort in the past six months to have a good quality product and this for a better price. So now we get a more competitive price. Here's a new invention, super-sensitive plastic sensors that convert light into energy. They can be placed anywhere and are easy to use. Many more solar projects are underway. Technological improvements have allowed us to produce energy from the sun six times more than 30 years ago. Well, we're almost at the end of the production line here in Toulouse, but before we bring you any further, or indeed to that story we mentioned earlier in Egypt, here's some other news in brief. A flurry of high-profile meetings take place on the countdown to Copenhagen in December. Businesses are waking up to the fact that the future is green and want to become part of the climate change solution. Meanwhile, the gap between the US and Europe becomes all the more obvious. And promising to stay on track with nature, the French government says any future Formula One race circuit will respect the environment. One of the possible sites for the new track just outside of Paris has drawn opposition from the Minister for the Environment as it would interfere with water reservoirs. Well, this solar panel is being held up to the light for inspection. If it passes the test, it can then go on to be completed and take its place on a rooftop or indeed out in the desert, where the sun is at its maximum. But not everybody might agree with putting fields of solar panels out here. As you're about to see in Egypt, tourists are doing their utmost to keep the sands pure. The gloves are on. The white desert is white no more. A growing number of visitors to this remote area in western Egypt have left a filthy trail behind them. Eight years ago, desert guide Saad Ali decided enough was enough, and now he hands out rubbish bags, plastic gloves, as he ropes in tourists to help him clean up the smelly mess. It's dirty. <laughs> All you clean is toilet paper and human remains, and it's, it's dry already, but it's smelling. In the first year, Saad Ali and his helpers collected eight tonnes of rubbish, and there's still a lot to pick up. Here is like my home. Everybody wants his home clean. You know, like, uh, this is where you make your money. And then it's also like, it's sometimes it's nice if you make money, then you spend money in the same place to keep it uh, clean and to keep it like people can come again. Last year, a record 40,000 tourists came to marvel at the desert's famous wind-carved stone sculptures. The environment is fragile, the wildlife under pressure. The last eight years, it was really too bad. Because it's not only the garbage, it's the too many tracks, too many cars. Five years ago, the White Desert was made a national park, and new rules mean an entry fee, set tracks for jeeps, and fixed camping sites. These visitors probably didn't expect a working holiday, but they're ensuring that in the future, the White Desert will live up to its name. So there you have it, a finished solar panel. This one produces 230 watts every day, enough energy for three household light bulbs. All we need now is some sun. We'll hopefully have that by next week. See you then.